case today I was just thinking and five tips of actually increasing your sales. You know, sales uh, and revenue is actually the lifeblood of any organization. Be it a church, it may not an NGO, it actually needs donations. So number one, uh, the trigger of actually increasing your sales is number one, I'll put prospecting. I think prospecting is actually a big deal because you can't close any deal, you can't follow up on any deal. Even if you're a good closer, even if we say you've got a good sales team, but without that lead, without uh, that prospect, there's no there's no business, there's no client. So I believe that prospecting is very key. What is prospecting? Prospecting is you actually you need to look for clients. You need to hunt for clients. Those people who have got ability to actually pay you uh, with a price which are high enough to 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 pay your products or your services. So when you're talking of prospecting, some of the people think uh, you need to advertise, you need to pay uh, for ads, you might do referrals, you need to activate your power base, you need to, because it's especially if you're starting, normally you don't have any marketing budget which is there, so you might need to go to your power base, the people, your friends, your churchmates, uh, your family, uh, ETC, power base is everywhere. You need to get as much referrals as you can. So you need to do a quality job in order for you to get referrals. So that's point number one. Then number two, uh, people, most of the sales people, they don't, so that's point number one. Then number two, uh, people, most of the sales people, they don't do follow-ups. I think states actually, the statistic says, uh, most of the sales are made from 80%. Uh, most of the sales are made from five to 12 calls. Like if you have to call someone for 12 times, you have to call someone up to 12, five up to 12 times in order for you to get 80% of your sales. So if you can't follow up, if you can't train your sales team to follow up on that same client. So it actually means, if, it's, if someone says no, a no actually means someone doesn't know something about your product, your service, which you're offering. So I encourage all the sales people, all the business people are out there, the entrepreneurs, they need to constantly follow up. If you are saying five up to 12, uh, we have to make five up to 12 calls in order for you to close. It's a big deal. You need to constantly follow up. And follow up is not supposed to be boring. So you have to use several channels of following up. It doesn't have to be a call only. You have to mix uh, meetings. I think nothing can actually replace a face-to-face -face meeting. Face-to-face -face meeting is, is unreplaceable, so you really need to try to have that meeting, which is key to follow up. You really need to call the client. You really need to email the client. You can message the client. You can even handwrite the client. You can even do a video. So there are several channels which you can actually follow up the client. Sometimes also you need to, you don't need to constantly follow up, let's say. You might need to, to, to have a week. After you follow, you follow someone, you have a week of a break, then you follow him some, some other day. So you need to follow up. I think actually here tell me you follow up someone for two years. That's when you can say, no, I think this business doesn't belong to us. But some of the clients, I'm, I, I've, I've been following up on the clients, some of them since 2015, I haven't get them their business, but I wish one day I would have their business. Then on, on, on number three, then on, on, on number three, I think you really need to know how to close. I think most of the statistics says 45% of uh, most of the sales people, they don't even ask for an order, which means you can have someone, you can, you can pitch your idea, you can prospect, you can pitch, but you just fail to ask for the order. So you really need to learn the skill of closing. If someone says the price is too high, you really need to know how to counter that objection. You, you have to constantly train your people to actually know how to answer these objections. It's most of the sales people, they make a mistake. If someone says price is too high, they're going to justify it. Say, no, it's, it's too high because if, it's, if you're selling water, because this water is from which source? No, that is not important. You are actually validating an objection. You need to, to first uh, ask and investigate to see if it's a complaint, if it's an objection. I think most of you, if you have actually bought bananas uh, from those vendors, 
Sometimes you, you just see yourself complaining, even if the banana is dollar for tea. You see yourself complaining, uh, bananas for a dollar. Why will you be complaining? Because it's a norm of a human being to always complain. We were taught to reject any price. I think if you see most of the business people or most of the most of the people, whenever you are buying, you are bound to actually resist the first price you are giving. You need to ask for a discount. So you really need to know the skill of closing. That is very paramount. If you're going to close, you make more sales. So that is very key. It says coming at number three. But that is key, know the skills of closing and you can increase your sales. Then on number four, I would like and you can increase your sales. Then on number four, I would like to say the sales people or the entrepreneurs, we have to constantly train. Training is supposed to be a, a crucial part of our menu. We are not training. We think that if you have a degree of sales and marketing, you're done. That is very wrong. You need to constantly train. Just imagine your 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 Cristiano Ronaldo without any training, your, your LeBron James without any training, your Serena Williams without any training. Those guys, they train daily basis. They take the woods. They go for six hours, seven hours every day. I was reading a serious story of Vinicius Jr. who is playing for Real Madrid is from, from Brazil. He, he was, this article was actually saying he's training seven, six to seven hours a day, especially during the, the, the total shutdown. That's what he was doing only. So we are saying as a source person, if you just use, if you use the strategies which you are using when you finish school, you're going to be in trouble. You really need to go and train. How do you train? Watch videos. There are plenty of videos on YouTube from Brian Tracy, Grant Cardone, Victor Antonio, uh, Zig Ziglar, ETC. There are a lot of them. There are a lot of source trainers in Africa. What are lots of university and require? You can go and listen to those videos. They can help you. That is actually training. If you're someone who likes to read books, you can go and read books. You read a lot of books. There are a lot of sales and marketing books which are which are there. You can also even go for audio books. You can even go for podcasts. That's learning. Actually, I've turned my 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 car into a small library because every day I want to know that sales tip. I want to know that sales lesson. So and lastly. Now on, on the fifth point, I think you have to really set your on, on the fifth point, I think you have to really set your goals very high, your source targets. Oh the source team, it doesn't make any sense if you've got a source team which is actually being paid on a fixed amount of salary. Source people are supposed to be paid by commission, and everyone actually works in an organization. That's why even here I believe that everyone belongs to the source department. Yes, we can have a different source department which has got sales titles, but everyone has to contribute to, to that, to, 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 to a sale. Someone has to contribute to a customer. Everyone who is working for an organization, end of the day, they are sales people. So this uh, skill of selling is very important. And uh, if you set your targets very high, let's say if you want 100,000, you want to, 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 to reach 100 grand revenue, you really need to put that effort. That is when it's coming, uh, prospecting is coming in, Follow up is coming in, closing and sales is coming in, even training is also coming in because we've got high targets. If you've got high targets, you're not going to relax. Definitely, if you, you set a target of 100,000, if you, even if you're going to fail to reach that target, at least you can achieve something which is a bit significant according to your own organization. If you want a target of a million dollars, I think I've, I've watched a certain video whereby Grant Cardone was actually laughing to say, how can you set up a target of 2.7 million and you say you're making money? And he was actually laughing it off and say, 2.7 uh, million is actually a, a year's expense of his, his jet, his jet, his private jet. So we really need to set big targets. If we are going to achieve something, if we want, if, if that is a big sales tip, your sales people are supposed to have tight, if high targets, if we're a CEO of an organization, if we're a manager, you really need to set big targets for your organization. Thank you.